Welcome back to another Madden 21 video uh, for you guys here today. Today it's going to be a continuation, uh, kind of, of a series that I'm doing. It's not like a formal series, uh, but recently I've just been making a bunch of teams by combining a bunch of different teams together just to see, you know, how those rosters would pan out. And today I combined every team in the AFC and then every team in the NFC, and we're gonna see which one of these teams is better. Which one wins the Super Bowl? Hopefully they can both make it to the Super Bowl. They should, for sure. But also we do have like a surprise guest. It's Mookie. She's, she's right here. You can kind of see her on my bed. She's just chilling, taking a nap, you know, hanging out. But if you guys are new around here, if you have not subscribed to the channel, and if you like watching Madden 21 franchise content, uh, then this is definitely the place to be. I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video in particular, and if you like Mookie, you know, just for good measure, uh, you can leave a like down below. But anyway, let's start going over uh, the rosters. So I chose the Steelers, and I chose the Saints. Um, I kind of just wanted to choose like a really good team in each conference. The Steelers are still undefeated. The Saints looked really good, at least last night against the Buccaneers. It kind of crushed them. Uh, but anyway, let's go over the Saints team. Both of these teams are a 99 overall because obviously they are. So the lowest overall player on the offense, I guess, who isn't a fullback is a 93. So, you know, that's the kind of roster we're cooking with right now. Uh, but Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Devontae Adams, George Kittle, you know, are the main offensive weapons on this team. Kyle Juszczyk is the fullback. He's a beast as well. And of course, a star-studded offensive line, the worst player being Brendan Brooks, who is not bad at all. Of course, he's not actually playing this year, which is very unfortunate for my Eagles. Um, but, you know, we have Jason Kelsey, David Bakhtiari, Zach Martin, Teron Armstead. We also have Ali Marpet, just has some decent depth. Uh, honestly, I got him, and then I realized that I could just move Brendan Brooks to left guard, and he'd be a higher overall, so I just never bothered cutting Ali Marpet. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Also, we have Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara on the team as the number two and three running backs. Tom Brady's also the backup quarterback. And then Johnny Hecker, I guess, is the third string quarterback. All right. Uh, but yeah, this offense should put up pretty historic numbers, I'd imagine. And then probably the same kind of idea here with the defense. Uh, so everybody aside from Eddie Jackson is at least a superstar, which is great to see. Uh, the defensive line consists of Cameron Jordan, Fletcher Cox, Aaron Donald, and Khalil Mack. I don't know how you plan to block any of those guys, let alone all four on the same team. Also, Kenny Clark is the third defensive tackle. Um, it, this should actually be Michael Pierce, because I think he is uh, the uh, third highest rated D tackle in the NFC. My fault. I got the wrong one. I just got Kenny Clark. I didn't actually look into it too much because I just figured it was the third defensive tackle. Not the biggest deal in the world. And I knew Kenny Clark was super good. He's a high overall, but it turns out Michael Pierce, I think is like a 91. So he technically should be there, uh, but that would not change uh, this team really at all. Uh, the cornerbacks, Jalen Ramsey, Jair Alexander, Richard Sherman, and Kendall Fuller. Of course, an insane group there. Three superstar X factors and then Kendall Fuller with star development. Marshawn Lattimore also just stayed on this team. I think I could have gotten a better option. Uh, other than him as like the number five corner but again it doesn't really make that much of a difference on this team and then eddie jackson and harrison smith along with jamal adams are the safeties logan ryan's also here i was surprised to see that logan ryan is the second best free safety in this division unless i completely miss someone which is a possibility um but you know logan ryan's an 83 i figured they'd have someone else who's a better overall but i guess you can probably move jamal adams to free safety i might even just do that to be honest just so we have the best duo possible up there so let me go ahead and do that okay so now the safety duo is jamal adams and harrison smith now of course nothing against eddie jackson or logan ryan or anything like that like they're both very good players in their own right but jamal adams is a 92 superstar x factor kind of figured we had to get him starting the linebackers are all middle linebackers but since this is a 4-3 you can kind of you know get away with this here bobby wagner levante david fred warner also demario davis demario davis i'm pretty certain is the highest rated right outside linebacker in this game which is just kind of funny to see because he's an 89. I mean, of course, he's very good. I'm not saying he's bad by, by any means, uh, but the right outside linebackers in this game are one of the weaker positions for sure, uh, just in terms of overall. But like Fred Warner at right outside linebacker or left outside linebacker is a 93. So technically he would be the best <laughs> outside linebacker in this entire game right now. Levante David will also be number two. It's kind of funny if you think of it that way. Uh, but yeah, there is the defense. This team is obviously insane. 99 overall offense, 99 overall defense. I wouldn't be surprised if both of these teams uh, go fully undefeated. I don't know if the Saints and the Steelers play each other in real life, like in this season. That would be an interesting game to see in this franchise if they actually play each other in the regular season. And I guess I can show you special teams because I did, I did get the best kicker and the best punter in this conference. So Robbie Gould and Johnny Hecker. So that is like the best of the best from the NFC. Now let's switch over to uh, the Steelers and I'll go over that roster. You also might be able to hear Mookie snoring in the background. Sometimes she breathes kind of loudly whenever she, <laughs> whenever she's asleep, but you know, it's fine. We're going to chill with it. Um, but this 
this team, of course, has a 99 as well. I mentioned that 99 offense, 99 defense. Patrick Mahomes is the starting quarterback, and then Lamar Jackson is backing him up. It's just really funny to see because, you know, he's a 91 overall superstar X Factor, and he's not the best quarterback. Uh, Derek Henry, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs are the running backs. A lot of power with all of these guys here. Those guys on their own are impossible to take down, and then all on the same team, then you can get fresh legs pretty much every single, like, couple plays. Uh, that's disgusting. I think this team should be able to win the game just based on running the ball. The NFC could probably do the same thing. Uh, and then Tyreek Hill, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs, and Odell Beckham Jr., along with Juju Smith-Schuster there, are the receivers. Uh, so this group is worse, I think, than the NFC group, uh, but they're still all obviously incredibly talented. Uh, the offensive line looking pretty similar to the NFC offensive line. Ronnie Stanley, Quentin Nelson, Rodney Hudson, David DeCastro, and Mitchell Schwartz. I didn't get any backups, but it's okay. There's no injuries or anything like that, so these guys should be good uh, the entire season. Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller are the top two tight ends. Eric Ebron just stayed on this team. The number three tight end doesn't really matter too much uh, in simulation. And then this defense is a 3-4. I just stuck with, uh, you know, the Steelers base defense. JJ Watt, Chris Jones, DeForest Buckner, Calais Campbell, and Cam Hayward make up this defensive line. This is such a good group. So much depth as well in this 3-4. These guys can rotate in and out and just honestly be un unstoppable. And then the edge rushers, we have Von Miller and Miles Garrett. And then TJ Watt is a backup. He's a rotational edge rusher on this team, which is absurd. Dante Hightower, CJ Mosley, and Bernardrick McKinney. Avery Williamson's also here. Uh, for the middle linebackers, Tyron Matthew, Devin McCourty, and Minka Fitzpatrick are the safeties. I think there was better free safeties I could have went after, like Kevin Byer, Justin Simmons, I think are both I higher overall than Minka Fitzpatrick, but it's fine. I just kept Minka on this team. Uh, the backup safety really doesn't get too much play time. Stephon Gilmore, Marlon Humphrey, Tredavious White, Denzel Ward make up a ridiculous group of cornerbacks. I can't imagine many passes are going to get completed uh, when you have a 99 overall corner and then a 91, 91, and an 88. Those guys are all uh, so good. And then on special teams, we have Justin Tucker of course and then Brett Kern as the punter uh, so this team obviously ridiculous as well Wait, I didn't talk about the fullback we have Patrick Ricard he's a beast um, but I personally think that the NFC team is going to be the one who wins the Super Bowl obviously both of these teams 99 overalls it's kind of a coin flip really because I do think the NFC has a bit better weapons but you know the AFC weapons clearly are not bad so I, I think it's gonna be very close but I do expect the NFC team to win the Super Bowl they are also the Saints a very cheesy team in this game in general if I made this on the Browns, I feel like maybe the Browns could have, you know, won the Super Bowl, but we're going to start simulating now, and I'll let you know what the records are all about for both of these teams. Actually, I guess I should mention this first. Uh, the offensive playbook for both of these teams are the Titans. I changed that. And then the defensive playbook for this team, I think I kept the Steelers, and then for the other team, I made it the Browns, because that's what I would normally run for a 4-3 defense. And then for a 3-4 defense, the Steelers have a pretty good playbook in this game. Wow, this team actually took down the Browns. Even though they're a 99, I'm still kind of surprised by that. But the team went 15-1. So the Steelers ended up losing a game. Let me see who they actually lost to. Because that's kind of nuts. This team should not have lost a game. Uh, they lost to the Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> 28 to 17. Turns out the Cowboys are better than a 99 overall team. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the stats. I'm gonna check out the stats for both of these teams, but I guess before I do that, I should check out how the Saints did. Did the Saints go undefeated? They did. Okay, that was fully expected. I really thought the Steelers would as well, but you know, this game's very cheesy sometimes when it comes to some teams. Uh, but let's check out the stats here for the Steelers. Patrick Mahomes, 4,630 yards, 55 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Um, he might not win MVP. It kind of depends on what Russell Wilson did, to be honest. Uh, rushing the ball, Derrick Henry, 5.5 yards per carry, 10 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Josh Jacobs, 440 yards, 7 touchdowns for him. Nick Chubb even got 5 touchdowns. Stephon Diggs had 12 touchdowns, so did Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Keenan Allen and Diggs, both over 1,000 yards. Keenan Allen, over 100 catches, though. The offensive line, of course, doing insane things. 101 tackles there for CJ Mosley, leading the team. Uh, we have 15 tackles for loss for JJ Watt, 13 for Chris Jones, 12 for Miles Garrett. Not too many sacks. I expected a lot more, uh, but these numbers are still really solid. Like, I expected Von Miller and Miles Garrett to get near like 15 or 16, uh, but still 12 and a half and 10, and then 8 and 6. Like, very good numbers there for the defense. And then four picks for Marlon Humphrey, two for CJ Mosley and Tredavious White, one for Tyron Matthew and Devin McCourty. How many forced fumbles do we have? Where is that even? I never checked this. That's fumble recoveries. We have at least two forced fumbles. We have more than that. So, uh, Miles Garrett has two, and then a bunch of players have one. We recovered three of them as well. Okay. Uh, any defensive touchdowns really quickly? We do not have any. We have no safeties either. And we have two blocked kicks, Tyron Matthew and TJ Watt. All right. Uh, now let me go over the stats of the Saints. 
So Russell Wilson had 4,348 yards, 50 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. So he had a really good season, of course. Uh, rushing the ball, Christian McCaffrey was uh, pretty ridiculous. Not many touchdowns, though. It seems like Alvin Kamara mooched a ton. He had 16. He had twice as many touchdowns as Christian McCaffrey, even though Christian McCaffrey had, like, double Alvin Kamara's carries. That's very interesting how that ended up working out, but whatever. Christian McCaffrey, 5.4 yards per carry. Alvin Kamara, 4.8. Julio Jones had 16 receiving touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. Michael Thomas, about 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. George Kittle, uh, 10 touchdowns as well. DeAndre Hopkins, 843 yards. Of course, when you have all those superstars on the same team, it's kind of difficult to get like one stud uh, because the ball's probably spread out a ton. This team let up seven sacks the entire season and two players on this team did not allow one sack. Jason Kelsey and Brandon Brooks both did not allow one single sack. That is nuts. Defensively, 104 tackles for Bobby Wagner. Uh, tackles for loss. We have 17 for Aaron Donald. These numbers aren't fair, but I'm pretty sure this is what would happen if all these guys were on the same team. Uh, because, you know, you can't double team all of them. And honestly, if like any one of these like top four players only get blocked by one guy, they're probably getting through. Uh, but Khalil Mack, 21 and a half sacks, 19 for Cameron Jordan, 18 for Aaron Donald, and then only six and a half for Fletcher Cox. But still, he did really well tackles for loss wise, probably, you know, good against the run. But my lord, these top three numbers are gross. And that's kind of like a really good indication that a 4-3 defense is just way better production wise than a 3-4, at least in simulation in this game. Like 4-3 defenses do so much better. Like these guys really aren't like much better than the players the uh, Steelers had on their team. They're all around like the same overall and the numbers are drastically different. Three picks here for Fred Warner, and then two for Kendall Fuller, Jair Alexander, Richard Sherman, and Jalen Ramsey, and then one for Bobby Wagner. Now, forced fumbles. This team had a lot of hard hitters on it. I imagine we have a lot of forced fumbles. Not as many as the AFC team had. Uh, what about fumble recoveries? Looks like we have three as well. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, defensive touchdown. We have one for Richard Sherman. There we go. This is really laggy right now. I don't know why. Uh, we have no safeties, and we have a blocked kick by Marcus Davenport. All right. Uh, so the Steelers were second in the NFL on offense. Imagine maybe the Saints are first and then seventh in the NFL on defense. Let me just check out this really quickly. So total offense, the Saints are first. And then defense, the Saints are also first. The Saints definitely seem like they played better. That's kind of what I figured was going to happen. Uh, but let's check out the yearly awards. Patrick Mahomes is going to win MVP. Russell Wilson at number two, of course. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. Only makes sense. Defensive Player of the Year does not go to anyone on the Steelers, actually. It's because nobody got a ton of tackles. That's probably why. We don't have any rookies or anything like that, but let me go ahead and check out uh, the NFC Offensive Player of the Year. It is Russell Wilson. Of course it is. Nobody else from the Saints there. Defensive Player of the Year is Khalil Mack and then Cameron Jordan, Aaron Donald. My lord. Okay. That group is ridiculous. Let's just go through and just advance by in these games. I'm sure these teams should make it to the Super Bowl. I really hope so, because if they don't, that would be really, really unfortunate. But I'll kind of just stay on one of these teams throughout the entire playoffs just to see how they do. Uh, but let's go ahead and advance by this game. They should be able to take down the Colts, right? Okay, 35 to 10. They should also take down the Chargers, hopefully. This is the only other game they have to win here. And they do win, and they have to take on the Saints. Perfect, that's exactly what I thought. Uh, but let's go over the Pro Bowl roster really quickly. Uh, we should, like, rule, like, all of these pretty much, but we're actually not going to have anyone in them because we're in the Super Bowl. I forgot about that. That's how that works. Uh, but let's go to the Super Bowl then, and let's see who's going to win. I do think it's going to be the Saints. I think the Saints are going to go completely undefeated. We're going to hop into this one. I'm not actually going to play any of these games. I just want this all to be computer generated. Uh, but let's see which conference is the best according to Madden. Okay, so the Steelers are going to take a uh, quick lead, 10 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, 10 to 3. Saints get something back, 13 to 3. Still a 10 point lead there for the Steelers. 27 to 3, a lot of quick scores right there. So it seems like the AFC is actually going to run away with this one, 27 to 6. Entering the fourth quarter, 27 to 9. The Saints cannot get a touchdown. 34 to 9, 34 to 16. They finally get a touchdown, but it's definitely way too late. And according to Madden, the AFC is the better conference. Now, I'm sure if I did this like a bunch of times, it would probably be like 50 50. If I did this like 100 times, the Super Bowl wins for each team would gravitate towards 50. That's just kind of, you know, makes sense in my head uh, because these teams are very, very similar. They're very equal when it, when it comes to a lot of things, I guess, aside from like defensive scheme, really. Uh, but anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I was suggested to do this one when I was, you know, compiling my other rosters and stuff like that. I think this one was pretty interesting to see which conference, you know, would be the best. But Patrick Mahomes is going to win MVP of the Super Bowl. 239 yards, three touchdowns. It makes a lot of sense. But anyway, thank you guys one final time for watching. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. This is where every step you take is too